Someone lift those hands to the Lord. Let's just acknowledge his presence in the house. Father, we thank you for another occasion to be here. Praise you for the grace and anointing over this house and over your people to bring us into greater levels of truth, understanding your word, and the grace you have afforded us in Christ Jesus through your Holy Spirit and your word. And right now we pray for your spiritual assistance, O oh God. Aid from your Holy Spirit to get deeper in your word, deeper in understanding, O oh God, the mysteries of the kingdom and things that you have declared is ours in Christ Jesus. And so we pray against every thought and every imagination, feeling, view, and opinion that exalts itself against your knowledge. You bring it into captivity and into obedience to you right now. We bind every spirit operating in the air right now. And we relate this atmosphere under your anointing and your power that your will will be done, O oh God, and your word will be declared with authority and with clarity. And those who hear, O oh God, will be transformed inside out. Hallelujah. As your word take full effect, that grace and favor will be released to us to go in deeper realm of fellowship and communion with you through your Holy Spirit and your word. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming. We're going to get into the word that is the word of the, the word of the kingdom. Amen. And God wants us to keep diving in the word because I believe there is a lot more to uncover in the word than we have so far come to know. Amen. God has a lot more to unveil to us. And I know that uh, he has had me um, te teaching on the theme about um, overcoming thoughts and um, old attitudes and ways that can hinder us from stepping and possessing things in a new season that he declared is ours. Amen. Hallelujah. The, every season has certain requirements. Hallelujah. That if one is not knowledgeable of then one can be at a disadvantage in that season. Amen. And this season, the Lord is saying we must get deeper in the word, deeper in manifesting the fruit of the spirit, deeper in our relationship with each other in Christ. We have to have a more sharper judgment of what is of the Lord and what is not because the enemy is still coming and he'll try more sneaky ways to do what he's doing but he's still aiming to do what is evil and we who are aiming to do what is right must be conscious that even those who do right the devil wants to do evil so we must be very vigilant sober huh? and equipped with the word to ensure that we do what God has called us to do and not be swayed by the, the demonic schemes of Satan that he has put forth to try to get us back in old positions, old mentality, huh? become lax or what I would say complacent, hallelujah, or at ease in Zion. We, want, we really want to ensure that we are moving in accordance and in sync with what God is doing in the earth and that we will not be left behind or fall behind where we will come and pray to the enemy's teeth. Amen? Right, so we really look in the word on the word of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we still, we tonight we want to talk about living and walking in the spirit. Living and walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is in Romans chapter 8, we find this dimension that Paul is talking about, walking in the spirit versus walking in the flesh. And I'd like to rephrase that as just walking as human beings versus walking as God beings. Or we can say it another way to say walking as ones that are limited by the flesh versus ones who are being led by the Holy Spirit, which is God. And so it is not so much about living just as humans, uh, following other humans, but more so 
of living as humans who have the nature and carry the presence and power of God. Amen. And so there must be something more unveiled in us than what we knew before. Huh? And that's what Paul is talking about. Paul addresses a lot of issues here in Romans. What I love to quote from Romans for the main purpose that Paul actually used Romans to go in much details about the gospel that he preaches both to the Jews and to the Gentiles to let them know there is one gospel. Amen. But there are some that were still under the old that Paul had to know um, uh, declare with greater level of teaching for them to understand what it is that they are called to is far greater than what they are leaving behind. And, eh? and so because there is a tendency when people eh, encounter struggles or problems or difficulties to go back to where they were comfortable before. Huh? And that, eh, that old place of comfort it doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> it might feel comfortable, but I don't mean it's right. Amen. And so Paul is here talking about it in Romans chapter. We can, we can take it from Romans 6 to Romans 8, but we'll start at 8 and then we'll backtrack to 6 for persons, especially those who have been quoting from Romans from what Paul said as and using some things out of context of how Paul used it. Amen. So we want persons to know what is the gospel here. He says, there is therefore when? There is therefore now no condemnation to who? To everyone. Most time you hear people quote that statement. They quote it as if there is no condemnation. Full stop after condemnation. And then they make this statement. God no condemn nobody. Right, <laughs> so we need to make sure that we understand clearly what the statement actually says. It doesn't say there's no condemnation. It says there's therefore now no condemnation to those. Yes, are those. To those who are with in Christ Jesus. And does it give further specification? Yes, it says those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but how? According to the spirit. This is not a physical walk like babies taking baby steps. This has to do with how they conduct themselves. He said it is not uh, directed or instructed by what the flesh wants, but more so what the spirit wants. And he says this is two different kind of life hello somebody he says the law of the spirit of life when he says the law for the law of the spirit of life in christ he, the law there is using us as the nature of how something under right and operates under certain principles the nature of what how something operates under certain principles. So it says, when he says the law of the spirit, he's saying the nature of how the spirit of life operates in Christ is what actually makes me free from the nature of how I operate in the flesh. Watch that. And in the, in the flesh is where he's talking about the law of sin and death because he made that statement in the chapter before that in his flesh, he found that the sin was operating in his members. So he says, what set him free from that bondage that he was in his flesh? It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made him free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. For he says, what the law could not do. The law was given to them by God through Moses. But he says, the law could not make anyone any of them perfect. It didn't bring what God was looking for. The righteousness and the holiness in the people was not there. The law was really given that by them doing what the law says, they, they would be, as the Lord would say, the cream among the crop of the nations because they'd be operating on a higher set of principles laid out by God that other nations were not operating by. Hence, they would be come as God's special people. Got that? 
and persons would come then from other nations and ask them where did they get this wisdom from and they could tell them this is from the lord you know and they too would want to know their god and worship their god in spirit and in truth but it says the, the law itself didn't give them that life the law state the standard that god would require of them things he wanted them to change in other words, it is revealing the law actually exposes that sinful nature in them. The law what? It actually exposed that sinful nature. It says, so, so the law did not make them righteous. You got it? The law actually showed up the rebellious spirit that was within them. That though they knew what the law said, their actions was doing otherwise. Come on now. So it says, for what the law could not do in that, it was what? It was weak through the flesh. What is the flesh? The flesh, there is not uh, the, talking about just flesh and blood. He's saying that this is weak through the, the sinful nature that was operating in us made the law weak in what it is uh, it is the commanding or requiring of us to do because the flesh of course was warring the desires in the flesh was warring against what the law was asking for you got it so it says it was weak in regard to the flesh but did it end there that god say well you understand you're just as some would say you're just flesh and blood so you know, now we're not perfect and your sin and God understands your still. So that's why Jesus come. Die for your sin. So all you have to do is just ask the Lord for forgiveness. Huh? No, he says, no. What the law couldn't do, God did. That God did is a very powerful game changer right there in the middle of the verse. When he says, God did. He says, what he was looking to see in us that was not met through the flesh because the war that was happening in the flesh against what the word of God said through the law. He says, God did it by sending his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh, what did he do? See, this is the character point. The change in character point that he says is the spirit now that is operating in you through Christ that is greater than the spirit that was operating in you through your flesh. That's what he says. God in turn recognized that no matter how much law he give a sinner, the sinner is going to break it. And it's not breaking, all of them not breaking it just because they want to break it. Huh? But, they, but, but there's a nature operating in them against what God is requiring. And that's called their sinful nature. Sin in turn humanity has um, created an appetite in him to rebel against what God requires. Rebel against what God wants. And sin operating in the human flesh want him to do what he wants to do rather than what God wants him to do. It is sometimes illustrated by we saying you put a sign out there, don't dump at this site, and everybody start to dump there. Come on, you don't put no sign there, nobody wasn't dumping there. You, know? you put a sign. In other words, the, the point of, of the law being given to, to those who are sinners or those who are rebellious, it actually show more of their rebellion. Because the rebellious doesn't want to submit to authority. That's the thing. And sin came as a means of rebellion. A rebellion from submitting to what the higher power requ required of them. That's how sin entered amongst men. What God required of them, they heard from Satan through that serpent and convinced the woman to go against what God said. And the man agreed with her. Come on now. So it says, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, this is the word here that most overlook. Is that he said, he condemns sin where? In the flesh. And what does condemn mean? Ah, put out of use. 
when a pipe is condemned they take off the tap they bung it they lock it off they turn off the source and they put up sign out of use it's done come on now so he say if he condemns sin in the flesh it is different from saying the word condone sin in the flesh most treat it as sin is condoned because God see the kind of world we live in and it's not a perfect world and it's a sinful world and we have a lot of things working against us and we are born in sin and shaping iniquity and all of sin and come short of the glory of God. They choose all the things that happen as a result of sin but they forget that same key statement God said. God did. God what? That's in verse 3. What the law could not do, God did. In other words, it was still done by God. Hello, somebody. God was able to undo what sin does. Hallelujah. And he said, how did he do it? He did it through his son. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. Why? That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in who? In us. Is there further specification there? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Notice there's always that terminology being used according to the spirit not according to the flesh but according to the spirit and that's not being said just repetitively just for the writer to make it sound like some poetry no he's saying that because he says you cannot walk according to the flesh and gain that life that life is gained by you walking according to the spirit. So persons then would ask, how do we walk according to the spirit? Huh? And then the answer would be that you then have to trust in God. You have to trust in who? In God, in his ability and in his power and in his nature. His spirit operating in you to produce that life. It's not you trusting in yourself to try to live it. All who have tried that have failed and have failed miserably. But you, you, faith is saying when God said his spirit lives in you, you are not going to say, I, I don't see trees shaking, I don't feel current running, I don't feel like I'm walking on cloud nine, I don't hear birds and the angels coming down and flapping their wings around me. No, you need to believe when God said it. It is so. So walking according to the spirit is not waiting on the flesh to see or feel things to say. Yes, it is so. That will be going according to the flesh. But according to the spirit is saying whatever the word of God said is true. Whether I see it, feel it, hear it or not, it is so. And you accepting the word as, as being so, then it says faith. Hallelujah is being applied to the word and it unlocks the power of the word which is the presence and power of God in your life. Amen. Praise God. So it says it's more than you just saying uh, I'm in Christ. And some verse, I'm in Christ. I have Christ. I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior and I'm saved. No it says you got to walk this thing out. What did we say? Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. This means to live 
in accordance to how the Holy Spirit wants you to live. You already have some preconceived notion and belief and view of how you want to live. But what you're doing now, you're opening up all of that to the Holy Spirit to change, to shift, to adjust, to lead, to transform how he wants it rather than how you wanted it to be. That's why for us to live that life, he said there must be a denial of self. We must deny self because self will get in the way of that. Self had a way of operating before it met Christ. Before it came into contact with Christ, self had a way of doing things and now you have to recondition, renew your mind to how it must operate under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will always lead you to do what the word of God says. Come on now. So if someone felt a need to do something and they say, no, it's my mind, tell me what I, what I, and I think is the spirit. The most sure way to test if it is the spirit is to check if it aligns with the word of God. If it goes against the word of God, you don't have to pray about it. You don't have to ask somebody else what they think. You must know say, that is not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit never tells you to do anything again the word of God you got it and so that's why it's important for persons to know the word of God hallelujah and it's the Holy Spirit that brings us into that knowledge into that what we call that that communion and fellowship in the word that you and the word become one hello somebody so for you and the word to be one, the word can't be saying one thing and you are saying another. The word can't be doing one thing and you are doing something contrary to what the word is doing. See? So there has to be a marriage between you and the word. The more the believer recognizes how important this union is between themselves and the word, the greater we see the manifestation of the life of God in that believer you got it and that is powerful because you have a way of how you used to talk of the jokes you used to run the things you used to do for fun for enjoyment for relaxation and now you're saying you, you are putting all of those things now under review of the holy spirit and the word and a sifting a sifting start to take place Whatever opposed the word that you identify, it, it is against the word that's being thrown out. Whatever the word requires that you are not doing, that's being added in now. So because there has to be a full partnership between you and the word. Huh? So you cannot take it for granted, oh, the Lord loved me so much so I can do anything because you already know I mean good and have a good heart. No, you have to revise even what a good heart means. <laughs> you have to revise what it means to say, God understand. When you say, God understand, do you understand what he understand? Or are you just saying, God understand, because you don't think he's going to do anything about what you just did? You see, so you have to revise your position and there has to be a renewing of the mind to know now everything is in check and in right order with the Lord. Huh? Because when you're partnering with someone, you have to ensure that anything that is obstructing or, or resisting or creating a conflict in that partnership is removed. Hello? The obstructions in a partnership works against the partnership that's why the lord says two cannot walk unless they agree and also the lord says any house any nation any country any people divided against themselves cannot stand right so it says there's a need then for unity huh is a need then for what unity between you and the word and it's the Holy Spirit that creates that bond huh? 
uh, having the word gives us the instruction of what to do but anyone you know you can follow the instructions and still not have the passion to do it still not have the love of or joy of doing it in other words you're just going through the routine you never see the husband or wife they they, they kiss and they shake hand and they say hi to each other and they do all things that look very cosmetic and nice like a like a fairy tale family but then you find out nothing not going on there it's all a show you understand it in other words it's more than you just having an external appearance of, of having a relationship with god god knows that it's the spirit that gives you that bond with the word that you don't just do what the word say but the word is doing what god says through you my god my god and that is a whole new level because it takes the sweat off you from trying to feel like doing it to you just get to the place that listen my man the holy spirit and the word is in me to get the job done and i'm not gonna murmur and complain and i'm gonna partner with the flesh that that wants to say no not again i'm fed up of this i don't want to do this any longer this is getting to me now i never planned for all of this flesh of all of that talk you know so that's why it says it's not this deliverance this righteousness being fulfilled this righteous requirement of the law being fulfilled in us is not fulfilling us who walk according to the flesh is fulfilling us who walk according to the spirit for it says those who live those who conduct themselves according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh you know that no one sins without setting their mind on the things that lead them to sin come on and every one of us have things that come to our mind that can lead to sin but it doesn't lead to sin until you set your mind on it coming to your mind is a temptation and believe me a lot of those things even came to jesus mind although some might you know find that as a far stretch Whoa. No, not Jesus. Jesus would never. Oh, yes. But the word of God said he was tempted in all ways. How? Oh, as we were. And so there's no temptation you go through that Jesus never. And I know some persons, if they even hear say Jesus had temptation for sex, they were like, ah, no, not Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. They won't ever think Jesus of an erection because somehow he's an angel. Yeah, but they, they need to know he came as a man. Huh? And he was a well-functional man. There was no, they, they, what they call there was no 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 redundancy in him eh? he never have no no what they call it uh, he wasn't impotent yeah that's what i mean he was not impotent and he had no rectality dysfunction. he was a full functioning man and i tell you praise god but the holy spirit was in him and the word was in him and he know what he was here to do and the word of God said, though he was tempted in all ways, yet without what? You see, sin is not about your desires being tempted. Sin comes when you, you allow those desires to take priority over God's word. I always tell persons that people don't steal because they are hungry or because they are in need. Because I said there are many people who are hungry and are in need and do not steal. So if it was the case that once you're hungry and in need is a natural thing you're going to steal, then everybody who was hungry and in need would steal. 
But the case is not so. Therefore, it shows that at one point for this person, this person had a different response because of how they responded to the need. Get it? While someone else had the same need and did not respond in that manner. And it wasn't luck. Come on now. So, so the, everyone, when they are hungry, it's a natural need of the flesh when the flesh is hungry to want something to eat. It's a natural setup in the body. It's the nature for the flesh operates that when it's low and full and nutrition, it wants something to eat to boost energy and strength in the body. If you stay without food for a while, you'll find the body starts to get weak uh, and, and, and lack the energy to do certain things right so there's a natural need of the body to eat but then jesus made it clear even when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights he said the devil tempted him to turn even stone into bread he said if you are the son of god you don't have to do it without food even these stones you have the power to turn into bread but that was not God. That was not God the Father telling the Son, turn stone to bread. That was the devil telling the Son, if you are Son of God. In other words, you prove it by turning these stones into bread. Huh? Let these stones become, command that these stones, what? Become bread. And he answered and said, it is written, what? Notice he didn't say, God shall not live. He's speaking here as a man. And says, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. In other words, he says, it's not bread alone. That keeps man alive. My God. Come on now. So it says, yes, there's a natural need for food when you are hungry. But he says, you, you must go about getting that food through God's means. And not through you just saying, I, I, I can do this to get it. So I'm going to do it without God giving you any instruction to do so and that's why he says he lives by every word that comes out it's not what the devil said is what the father said he's going by the spirit huh? and not by what the devil is trying to lead his flesh to do prove yourself huh? by turning what stone into bread and of course when he turned the stones into bread what is he going to do look on the bread <laughs> talk to me he's going to eat it yeah in other words, the devil is setting up a scenario here. It's not about improving if he's son of god it's about him breaking the means of him going through fasting to discipline the flesh, to reach into a higher level of connection with the Father of his purpose and mission here in the earth. Come on. And so he had to discipline the flesh to increase his sensitivity and dependency on the Holy Spirit. Come on now. That's what fasting is about. Fasting is, should not be used to get car and house and get money. And get visa and go abroad. I tell you, the church have a lot to be learned on that. But I tell you, the word of God tells us what fasting must be for. You know, Isaiah, the prophet declared and said, Is this the fast that the Lord requires? He says, Some person were abusing fasting. Everything that is given to the word can be abused. 
You hear what I say? And that's why it must be properly used. It's the Holy Spirit who teaches you how to use the word in a way that is pleasing to who? To God. Huh? The Lord said to Isaiah in Isaiah 58, he says, cry aloud and what? Spear not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their what? Their transgression and the house of Jacob, their sins. Now were they living as righteous? No, they are living as sinners. He says, yet they seek me daily. They are, they are committing sin. Look but what he says. Yet they seek me daily. Why would you seek him if you're still going back to sin? Watch it, you know. It's, you seek me daily. They delight to know what they want to hear. Oh, what are the ways of God? They delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness like a nation that is living righteously. They come and say, let us hear the word. They have that outward appearance of what is right. But what the Lord say? They, they, they acting as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. You see them approaching and say, man, those people, they love God. Huh? But what did the Lord says? He says, he heard them saying, why have we fasted? They say, and you, you who? God, they're saying, you have not seen. In other words, it's like their fast is not producing results in their life. And they're saying, why have we fasted? And you have not seen. Why have we afflicted our soul and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, what the Lord said, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. And what you do? You exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate to strike with the fist of wickedness. You know, persons fast for the demise of others. And think they're doing God's work. I mean, there are 40 men who are Jews that said they would not eat anything. No food would touch them mouth until Paul did. And they thought they were doing God a favor to get rid of Paul. You better hear what I'm saying here. Fasting can be abused. And he says, indeed, you fast for what? Strife and debate. To strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day. To make your voice heard on high. When they start to fast, they bellow, they bellow, they voice. Yeah! People would say, Oi, man, that person really loving God. So, like in God, in dead now, giving life for the Lord. And the Lord says, Shut up. <laughs> Stop this noise. He says, Oh, your fast, that's not the fast that is approved by me. He said, is it a fast that I have chosen? In other words, you have a way or you want to do it. The Lord said, did I told you to do it that way? You see, that's where you say, walking by the spirit versus walking according to the flesh. You get it? And he says, is it 
a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like bullrush? Huh? And to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast an unacceptable day to the Lord? They thought it was a great one they were doing. So that's why they said, God should be impressed. We put ashes on ourselves and we wear sackcloth. Sackcloth is like crocus bag. It itch and it feel bad. And sweat start to eat you with that. You don't feel comfortable at all. So they said, we afflict. <laughs> we afflict our soul. And you don't see. And the Lord said, I didn't tell you to do that. Or the Lord said, this is the fast I've chosen. That's in verse 6. He said, is this not the fast I have chosen to do what? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To be totally separate and apart from anything that involves wickedness that is wicked and hurtful to others. To undo the heavy burdens, not to add weight and pressure on other people's life. He says, to let the oppressed go free. Come on. Those who are in trouble and feel calm and feel like they're going to lose hope. He said, for you to release them. That you break every yoke. Come on. Huh? Talk to me here. So he said, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? No, you put up your bread. I ain't not eating none and say yes, you're fasting. He said, no, share your bread with the hungry. Bring to your, that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. And he, I said, when you see the naked that you cover him, he don't skin up your nose and just pass him. Nor hide yourself from your own flesh. Seeing your own relative and, and turning away like you don't see them. He says, then what will happen? Your light shall break forth like what? Like the morning, your healing shall spring forth how? Speedily. Come on, somebody. Huh? And your righteousness shall what? Go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Glory to God. Come on now. Huh? Then you shall what? You shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Imagine God saying that. Here I am. Like a baby crying out and the parent run come and say, I'm here baby. Come on. He starts say, I will say I am. I hear I am. Huh? If you take away the yoke from your mates, the pointing of finger, the speaking of wickedness, huh? if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then what? Your light shall shine. Your light shall dawn in darkness. In other words, even dark places when you go there, you're lighting it up. Come on. Your darkness shall be as noonday. Look how bright noonday is. And he said, that will be the darkest part of your life. He said, that will be your darkness. So what your, what, what your, your day look like? If your darkness is like noonday, what your day look like? Oh, Jesus. He said, the Lord will guide you what? continually and satisfy what your soul when even in drought in a dry place and strengthen your bones you shall be like a what a watered 
God, like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Come on, somebody. These are the ways of the righteous. That's the life the Lord bring you in when you hear and obey when you walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Are you hearing me? And he says, like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Those from among you shall what? Build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. Come on. You shall be called what? The repairer of the breach. The restorer of streets to dwell in. My God, when we just came around here, they had security at the gate. Eh? And they was talking how much people was robbing and getting robbed around here. They say, hey, we don't know you're going to have church only. Careful of your people. Them send them out. Make sure you send them early. And make sure somebody down there, they watch them. I say, uh-uh. We, come on, somebody. And I remember neighbors coming down here and saying, Pastor, we don't want you leaving. Oh, oh they heard some stories about us leaving. And they were traumatized about it and said, we don't want to leave because uh, since you come here, my God, he says, there's a whole new lightness on this street. Come on now. Because when we come to a place where people abandon and feel say it is so volatile and so hard to live in, we must bring light to that era. Glory to God and make people want to dwell where they never want to dwell before. People want to come there. Hello. Because of how we live. Come on. Huh? So when he said, if you turn away your foot from this Sabbath, remember, this is something that I show the, the Sabbatarians. I show them that. Consider this part that from the first verse, of the 58 did the lord said they were righteous no he said cry aloud and show me people then sin then transgression they are sinning so when he says here if you turn away your foot from this sabbath if you what from doing your pleasure on my holy day what was their pleasure <laughs> Sin, it wasn't working. Working can't be the sin because sin can't be sin on a particular day. And when another day comes, it's not sin. That means uh, if, 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 I have, if I have fornication with a lady today when it's not Sabbath day, it's not sin because it's my work me doing. But when the Sabbath day come and me do it on the Sabbath day, then it's sin. Because it's the Lord's day that day. Six days I have to do my work. And the same day I do his. You hear what I'm saying? In other words, sin is not sin on a particular day. Sin is sin any day. So if work was sin, work would not be sin because work would it would then be saying that when on that day you're not to work is sin if you work that day but if you work any other day is not sin work is not the sin what he was talking to them he said the pleasure that they were doing the striking of the fist and the wickedness and the abuse and the wickedness that they were doing he says it was sin they were sinning what he said to Isaiah, cry out and spear not. Show them, crack load about their sin. Come on. That's why the Lord had no pleasure in their fasting. Because he said, you can't be fasting and still doing those wickedness. And said, this is the fast you give to the Lord. So the Lord said, this is the fast he require. So he said, the fast he require. What is really the fast? You know what he said? All the fast in talk about it. Don't tell him, say, they're not to eat no food. <laughs> and still today, man never eat. 21 day fasting. 
And when they are sound, all start stomach pull up their stomach, then they say, Is the devil. Because they are still doing it by the flesh. The real fasting, the Lord telling them that He wants is for them to do what is right continually. And that can be sustained. That won't be something you do on the seventh day. That won't be something you do for seven days. That won't be something you do for 21 days or 40 days. That is something you do for life. And He said, if you do these things when you cry, I will say, Here I am. When you call, before you call, I will show up and I will do marvelous things for you. Come on, somebody. Aren't those the things of the righteous? And in Christ, aren't we righteous? Is it just for a day? Oh, Shama City. No, it's for a lifetime. Come on, somebody. For long as you live. That life must be in you. Eh? Come on now. So when he says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure, he's talking about sin. If you stop sin on my holy day and call the Sabbath what? A delight. Then if you call the Sabbath a delight, and you're delighted in having one day for the Lord without sin. You're not going to have more than one. You mean say only go on and have one holy day with the Lord. Come on now. Because if you call that Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words. Aren't you supposed to do that every day? Come on. Then what will happen? Then you shall delight yourself in who? Oh God. You shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to what? Ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with what? The heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has what? Oh, has spoken it. Come on somebody. You know how sweet it is we serve the Lord. man. I, I, I don't think some believers really know yet. Oh my God, I, I, I get upset sometimes with them. I really get upset sometimes with them not knowing. Because I, I'm just like, aren't you interested to know? Okay, you, have to, you have to ask some Christian today. You interested to know? God, they look like. Oh my God. Hello. And so, so within the word of the Lord said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Oh God Almighty. And what could you desire when you delight yourself in the Lord that the Lord will not give to you? Come on. He said when you don't delight yourself in him, then the desires that you have of your heart goes contrary to what he wants for you. Because you are not making him the center of your life and your joy. You are making things and people and, and appointments and business. And he said, eh, eh, let me be the center from which all those things flow. And he said, well, you're going to be surprised what me and you can do together with it. Come on, somebody. So he said, if you delight yourself also in the Lord, he shall give you the desires of your heart. Have you never sat down and just worshiping the Lord and things you forget about start to come back to you? You just sit down quietly with him and say, wait, wait, oh, I never remember about that. 
the Lord start to bring it back to your memory and show you say yes this need to be done remember you have that uh, and get that in order soon when I finish with you here and you get your instruction you know step out now you're surprised how much things you are able to accomplish within a day come on somebody and then when you check the week you say wait as so much thing accomplished in a week and then you look back at the month you say we will on a one month alone me do so much you have to be looking and realizing now say it's not you it's god working in you and somebody need to know that life what you say oh my god when you know that spirit-led life hallelujah it's more than just talk it's more than just walk it's more than just doing some errands there's a partnership with you and the lord that keeps growing and it's growing on you it's transforming your inside out glory to god and who doesn't want that kind of transformation from the hand of the maker that no matter how much things and events and experiences that mess you up when god gets his hand in that he turns it into a masterpiece glory to god and i don't see how people can be around god and not experience that it aggravates me man to know people who say, I know the Lord, and they're so so and low and depressed and stressed and weary and mourn and torn. Uh, looking like, my God, you really need to know the Lord. Oh my God. Because when you know the Lord, I told you before and I tell you again, when you know the Lord, and even if, if you just start to know Him, my god if you even just start to know him after long talking about him and hearing others talk about him you just start to know him when you just start to know him something is happening inside you everyone that say I, I don't even know who i'm becoming yet because of the change that is taking place it's so miraculous it's so far beyond anything you could think or do for yourself when God is in the midst. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I know that there was a place where when I was alone, I was so alone. So isolated, so oppressed, so depressed, so lost. Huh? so worn so done but my god in christ i am never alone come on somebody in fact i i rather love be with christ well, you will get the one later you know? <laughs> sometimes i don't even like how that people be around me just me and the lord hallelujah but he's deposited a lot in me that that it it when i connect with someone i have something to pour out to them and when they have connected with the lord and link with me we have something to pour out to each other and my god when we start to pour out my god we don't need no pulpit no podium no mic no musician we don't need no tambourine hallelujah we have church right there <laughs> hallelujah because it's a joy to talk about the lord and his goodness and his mercy and his kindness and his word and his spirit come on somebody and when that gets a hold of you you can't keep it into yourself you feel like you're about to explode oh shut up and people be wondering why why you have that smile why you have that move why you're rocking so what is happening they don't know how much o'clock 
Tell him, say, is that right? You go and know because you might not like what comes next. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Because if you love the Lord, it must show, man. And you must be shy to make it sure. And you must feel cute and uncomfortable for it to show. Any time you feel uncomfortable about showing the love you have for the Lord, you need to take a check of what is there that is causing that and get that out of the way so God can have full play because anyway God can have full play in you there's a room for the devil to come in but if you make God oh come on somebody be magnified in your midst something good oh is going to happen and i tell you you ain't seen the best of it yet something more is coming i tell you you can't outdo god you can't overdo this thing when you start up with the word and the holy spirit something bubbling up inside that you need to refill and refresh in the lord and i don't know how it is for others just sitting by and hoping to get by but i tell you they are missing out they are missing out on a whole lot and i tell them don't just be satisfied to hear about god and to talk about god spend real time with him to know him to know his voice come on somebody when you get into a mode where you recognize when the anointing come on you and some shift learn how to maintain that position to 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 entertain and to embrace and welcome that flow of the spirit that is still longer with you and that you can eventually activate it we are needed for someone deliverance and breakthrough but you must move. You must shamasa. You must move. You must not sit by and let the devil come and take set on you and frustrate you with all kind of feelings and thoughts and you daily striving to get a breath to stay awake. He said, Get up and praise the Lord. Get up and worship Him. Get up and give God a praise dance. Give him a worship that he don't need no applause. Don't need nobody to tell you that look nice. Do it for the Lord. And God will invade that place. And you'll feel heaven start to engage with you. In the room. He and Okorababas say to. He angels and anointing and power flowing around you. And you will be able to discern and sense demonic powers being expelled from the room. Come on, somebody. So I don't know what others are thinking, but I know where I am with the Lord. Hallelujah. Something, something, something. Something good is about to happen. Oh my God, this is bigger than a tsunami. Bigger than a hurricane, bigger than a tidal, typhoon or tidal wave. Hello, somebody. The anointing is flowing. Hey, Shemasa. And I tell you, those who connect is wise to connect. To Shemasa. Because God is raising up a standard. Raising up a standard against the enemy and the gates of hell cannot prevail they are already defeated my god my god every time i step out i hear demons screaming i hear chains breaking i see people fleeing hallelujah to run to the god of their salvation and i know more coming rebo shamasa because god is doing a new thing glory to god and somebody believe it will see it they didn't look to see it to believe it they believe it so they will see it glory to god because they believe the word they didn't have to see the evidence first 
they didn't have to see hallelujah something happened before their eye for them to say i, I, I think i see it coming now uh -uh. they heard the voice of the lord and it's echoing is reverberating something in their spirit that god is turning this around for their good come on so we have to learn how to engage heaven in the earth amen we have to operate from a platform as we say walk in the spirit you have to operate from a platform that's not carnal and earth bone and fleshly and just human you have to understand you are children of the most high god in heaven in the heaven's court and you have authority to command things to speak for things into being Oh, you know, and I understand it. You know, stay there. Things say we just come to play with no devil. When we speak, things things happen. And that's why the Lord don't want us to speak idle words. He don't want us to be listening to the devil and following our feelings of our flesh and speak out of frustration and speak out of ignorance and speak out of envy and strife and contention. He said, do the thing that please me. And he said, if you do the thing that please me, then your light will shine forth in darkness. Your, dark, your darkness will be known there. My God, your darkness will be like known there. And come on, somebody. Then the Lord tell us that those in the city, he says, there's no darkness there, no night. My God, don't you know you're in the city already? Uh, those in Christ are in him and he is there. Come on, somebody. I have to understand then the light must shine. You don't need to carry a light. No, it's a light, no candle. You need to understand you have that light in him through the word and the Holy Spirit. And the devil must know, say, light there. Hello, somebody, and anything of darkness must flee. Oh, somebody give him the praise. Glory to God, because we're living, we're walking by the Spirit. Oh, Shama City. We are weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. And when things start to cave in on you, you need to open your mouth and speak. Amoshanda, you need to take up your weapons of warfare in the Lord and command things to align with the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Somebody praise him in here. Oh, Shama say to you need to command some things. Oh, Shama say to you need to stop waiting things to come true and command them. Moshataba say to line up with the king and with the kingdom of God. God has conveyed you from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on now. So it says you are not under the rulership of any powers. Hallelujah of darkness in this earth. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. You are of a higher caliber of people because God has chosen you. The ones that the world call rejects. The ones that the world call foolish and nothing. The ones that the world despise. The Lord said, those are the ones for me. Because they are in the world but not of the world. They are chosen for my purpose. You see, you must shine that light. Come on, somebody. You must expel darkness. You must come on darkness and things that group in darkness to flee. I don't hear anybody in this place. But you need to have a voice. Debo Shamasa. What good is a king without a voice? You need to command things because you are kings and priests unto God. You need to speak to things. Hallelujah. And I understand that when your word go out to your mouth with God, spirit and word in you, power is being released. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit. Stop allow the flesh to dictate 
Ah, so many people have lived and, and, and based their life upon the flesh that they, they try to manipulate everybody. They use their emotion, they use their flesh to manipulate people. And they want to convince people, they cry. When they want to get people on the, and on the right side, they, they do all kind of playful things with them. They are manipulators. God didn't call us to manipulate. God tell us to walk according to the spirit. Come on, somebody. And manipulators operate like witch and wizards. They are playing on people like they're casting spells. But you must walk in the spirit. Come on, somebody. And if you walk in the spirit, he said, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, what the flesh wants is not going to get. The flesh won't be happy about that, but God will be happy because what God has for you is bigger than what the flesh can give you. Come on, somebody. The flesh will only get in the way. My God. But if you humble yourself and say, Lord, here I am now as a vessel. Use me for your glory. Oh, Shama City. Everything I have is yours. I hold back nothing from you. Oh, Shama City. God will start to expand your territory because if he can trust you, he release more to you. Come on. Oh, Shama City. Come on now. God release to those who he believes will be able to manage what he released to them. If he don't believe they'll be able to manage, he ain't giving it to them. Come on now. In James 1 verse 7, it says there that God is saying that the double-minded, anyone who is double-minded will not receive anything from the Lord. Huh? Anyone who is what? Because he calls you to be single-minded about the word. Single-minded about his spirit. Double-minded means that you are of another mind. You're not operating by the mind of one. Huh? He said, if any of you what? Lacks wisdom. From verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, go to school. Get a degree. Ah, he ain't saying that's wrong for you to go to school and get degree. But he says you ain't getting that wisdom from school and from degree. He says you need to ask God for that wisdom. Solomon grew up as a son of David, the king of Israel. No doubt he was schooled by the best scholars. But yet still he asks God for wisdom. It's not scholars and teachers he get that from. He asks it from the Lord. Come on now. He said, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who what? Gives to all. He all what? All who ask of him, he said, he give to all liberally. In other words, he's not pinching and stinging on the wisdom he's releasing to you. Is given to you liberally and without reproach. Huh? And it will be what? Given to him. But he said, here is the condition. You must ask in what? Oh, hallelujah. You must ask in faith. And isn't faith based on the word of God? It's not based on what you just feel or anything you want to say and believe for it and say it's faith. It's based on the word. So it says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. With no what? Doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Driven and tossed by the wind. In other words, he's unstable. Hallelujah. Let not that man suppose that he'll receive what? Anything from the Lord. He is what? A double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Come on. Huh? My God. Double-mindedness does not make 
the way for your success in the kingdom. It will, you will be in the kingdom and don't have nothing. Like a man standing in a furniture store and not have none. You see, because it is faith that is the currency that's going to allow you to take something out of the store that's going to be yours. So some say, hey, I ain't in the kingdom. <laughs> but they ain't getting nothing. Because they are not exercising faith. I don't hear anybody here what I'm telling you like it is hallelujah and i'm telling you you need to stir up your feet in other words when you you see a need you need to match the word to the need what the word of god say about it and connect that need with the word and start to speak the word in that need and watch the word open up the provision for the need because if you don't have a word on it your mind is going to be wavering. Abraham had a word from God. That's why the word of God says, him being strong in faith did not waver. Why didn't he waver? Because he had a word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So he said he had a word. Many times people are unable to receive what they're praying for because they don't have a word from the Lord on it. They're just praying the wish. And God never called it to pray a wish. God is no Santa Claus. I no fear it. What do they call it? Tooth fairy. That you come and give your wish list. Uh-uh. He says, you need to understand there must be a word for it to be faith. For it to be faith, what? There must be a word. What's the word you're using to cut down that thing, to open that thing, to unlock that thing you're praying, praying and believing God for? Huh? He says, not being weak in faith. That's Romans 4. Romans 4 verse 19 says, Abraham says, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. He did not what? There were things in his body to consider, but he did not consider it. Had he considered his own body when he heard the promise, there would be a wavering and a doubt. Because God gave him this promise, a man, if you can count the stars in the heaven and the sun and the sea, sure, so shall your seed be. And he got that promise while he was already old. So even if you have all the wives like Solomon, he couldn't have children like a sun and star. So if he's calculating the strength of his body and the vigor of his, his own physical might, he would not be able to receive the word. But he's calculating the one who gave him that word and the faithfulness of that one to keep his word. You got it. So it, it, when he says not being weak, he then predetermined not to be weak. Persons can be weak in faith and say, well, I mean, no, I'm weak in our faith. In other words, they accept that level of weakness. But Abraham did not accept that. And what did he choose to do? Rather than thinking about the odds that are against him, he's thinking on the possibility and the surety of the word. So he says he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about what? A hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. What was what? He was strengthened in faith doing what? Oh my God, you got to learn how to give glory to God when the stress and the issues of life start to weigh down on you. You need to stop just sucking in the stress and taking under the stress and rise up and start to give God the glory. Repeat the promises, draw the sword of the spirit and cut down 
what the enemy is raising up around you to block your increase and your victory and your miracle come on he says being fully convinced what did abraham do you see when he when he through through he says was strengthened in faith but was what strength in faith what strength in his faith how does faith come you see in other words he kept listening to the word feeding on the word he if if he don't keep feeding on the word the the flesh is gonna start to tell him you know see you're getting older how possible is it gonna be you know you know see the wife get older too how is she going to have children? Come on. Then he would have reason to doubt. <laughs> Come on. He would have reason that unbelief would creep in and make his life miserable because he's seeing seen the thing that God speak of as something far away and unreachable. Because of the odds that are speaking against him. But he says he wasn't looking at the odds or reciting the odds. I don't like when I give instruction to people in the word. They're telling me what, how hard it is and what they have to do. And maybe they won't be able to do it now. That is not talk of faith. It means that you are already trying to find reasons not to. Rather than to do. It means you are not willing come on faith don't give you excuses not to do it faith empower you to do it he says he did not waver at the promise of god through what unbelief what was what he was strained what strained him the promise of god that was what strained him strained in faith he listened and meditated on the word and giving glory to god huh so while he's strength meditating and declaring the word he's giving what he's making his boast in the lord hallelujah and being what fully convinced there must be a point where you come that you are fully convinced that it will go just the way the lord said and not just for this one occasion this one day no but for a lifetime forever hello somebody huh being fully convinced that what he had promised what promise god had promised he was able it's not he abraham was able it's god who gave the promise he believed was able to perform it hello somebody when Joseph got the dream that his brothers would bow before him and even his mother and father, he never went on a campaign to exalt himself so one day during campaign for presidency they will bow. No, he just kept doing what the Lord said and glorifying God about the word he get. And then they were like, I was boasting about the word and threw him out into slavery. Down was they actually threw him into the place where god had the design and purpose they should come and bow that's why J joseph understanding things said you meant it for evil but god seeing the, the the destruction that was heading for israel saw to send me ahead of you that when that great famine would come salvation would be here for israel come on now you see it huh it's genesis 50 verse 20 he said but joseph said but as for you you meant evil against me but god meant it for good in order to what bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive and it wasn't just israel but many nations came to them in that seven years of famine come on now 
And that's how Egypt became great. Because many nations brought their goods and treasures and lands and gave them for seed and food. When they, 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 they gave it one for one year and it used up, they come in the next year with something more to give to get more. And some will never have nothing more to give. Come and offer their land. That's how Egypt became great. And then in turn, I make slavery of the people. Through whom God used to make them great. That's why the Lord, because when they're leaving, they strip them of those things. Come on now. Because it is God huh, that give us the power to gain wealth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not our hard labor. Lord Jesus. Oh, someone need to get that one. I say it's not our hard labor. Glory to God. But by the spirit of the Lord, he gives us the power. He gives us what? The power to gain wealth. He, he will make us become like a magnet attracting the favor. Because he said if you do the thing right, then your darkest point to your life is like noonday. Your darkness is noonday. Then what your day, your day is like. Lord Jesus. My God, you have to wear sunshade all the time. Hallelujah. Spotlight. Because God said he's blessing you. Huh? Come on. Hallelujah. So he wants you to know. Hallelujah. That he's a God of covenant. He keeps his word. Abraham believed. That one who made him the promise is faithful. And that's why a Jesus was saying to the, to the Jews, Abraham rejoice to see my day. Abraham saw it from afar off. But now Abraham was seeing it manifest that the children, his children were being raised up with that kind of faith through Christ. And it says it would be more than he could count. Not just of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. So what the devil sought to interrupt and to cut off Joe Abraham through the flesh. Because he died long before the children came that could not be numbered. Come on, the flesh died, but the Lord says, Abraham rejoiced to see. As he was still speaking of Abraham as alive. To see my day. Glory to God. His body is dead, but his spirit is much alive. And he said he's seen children being birthed through the spirit and through the word with true faith as he had. And those who have the faith of Abraham huh, are Abraham's children. Come on now. So he says then, you must have that kind of faith, man, to walk in the spirit. To what? To what? Walk, believe, Rosha Masete, that God clothed you with clothes that you don't buy a shop. Hallelujah. And God clothed you with his presence and his glory. You might not look physically and see it because it's spiritual, but you must be aware that's the kind of person you are in the Lord. Hallelujah. And he has given his angelic host as a ring of fire around you. When you speak the word, speak with authority and command the kingdom to show up. Hello, somebody. Somebody give God the praise in here. Hallelujah. Glory. All right, we have to close off here now. Hallelujah. We start late, but give you as much as I could within the time allotted. And give you a chance to give questions and comments, hallelujah, and rebuttals if there's any. Praise God. Those who are online can type it in the comment box. And those, uh, we will also give hearing to those within the time allotted here. 
and those in the house can speak before the mic and we give hearing to your questions or to what concerns you have. Praise God. Our comments. Praise God. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Our pastor, I want to give you a thank tonight. I want to thank God. Hallelujah. I mean, this is more than food. <laughs> oh my thank God. Thank you, Jesus. And mm. I, I, I can contest and can testify to everything that you have said. Mm. Um, and that's why I said, oftentimes I am, I have this crave of wanting more mm -hmm. because when you're in the spirit, I mean, sometimes people don't understand. And when you're trying to explain it, you you just have to say. Well, you will not understand until <laughs> I remember you said you won't you don't get it yet. But when mm. they really get it, I tell you, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I give God thanks for my job. Oftentimes I used to, I mean, be the shy person, as they said, <laughs> or just afraid to speak. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give God I just want to thank God for this privilege. Hallelujah. Mm. Um, last week I was at work and uh, I have some things dealing with and work issues. And mm. I remember the wife came to me first and she made a report to me. And uh, I tried to deal with it as best as I could. Anyway, I called the husband and I told him because the, the wife said, because of what happened, you want the matter to go before the court. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I called the husband and when I called him, he was giving me all sorts of answers and like going around coming. However, I, he didn't come at the same time. So I called him back another day and he, he said, all right, he was coming. So when he came, he said, um, Miss Williams, I didn't know that it was you, this type of person, this pretty lady. So I was like, I said, yes. And, you know, the, I, I was not taken into what he was saying, but yet I was ready to give him the word. And I said, and he said, are you Mrs. or Miss Williams? I said, I'm a proud Miss Williams. And he looked at me like, what is she saying? But however, I, what I wanted to share with him is the word of God and what the word of God says about marriages. And I, as a child of God, we must have standard. Yes, and yes. we must not lower a standard because the enemy knows and he will come to play. Definitely. And if we give him that open door, he will come in. And so I, I was telling him that, I mean, sinners cannot keep covenant. Mm. And marriage is a ministry. Marriage is a thing that is honorable to God. And if you are not a child of God, it will not work out for you. Mm. Because flesh is going to take over. Yeah. You're going to take over. It's not about what you have and what she have. It's about us. It's about that relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that you want to pass on, that you want to share with others. And sometimes, even though you're not married, they, they, they just think you cannot speak the word. Mm -hmm. But I said, this is, you have enough time to spend in the word of God because the word is power. It is knowledge. It is what is going to keep mm. you along with the Holy Spirit because if you do, the word of God remind us if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we are none of his. Definitely. And you know, I just want to, and you know, the wife came back and I could hear the Holy Spirit saying to me, don't go in depth because she's shaky like she wasn't speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. And so as I about to open, I, I, I was listening to what the Lord is saying to me. And I just let it go. And, you know, um, last week, I have one of my ex coworker died. And okay. uh, when I went to work the other morning, they were said, boy, I really touch me. We feel it. So I was like, yes. Uh, the, the thing about it is what I'm saddened about, he didn't repent and give his life to the Lord. Because I remember many times I was at work, we were both there. I shared the word with him, asked him if he don't want to repent and give, and he's 60 something. But he was just planning on his retirement and because things was rough. So when he get that money, he will be able to do this. He will be able to spend his time wisely and whatever. And I was saying, if you're not spending your time wisely with Jesus Christ, you don't have any time. So I was sharing the word with him. Oftentimes, at his age, he's looking because of his build. 
you know, he, he thought he was not loved. And at times I realized he was lonely. But then I was trying to tell him that there's a love mm. that man cannot give to him. Yes. It's only Jesus Christ because he gives comfort. Mm -hmm. He can comfort you. But he wouldn't listen. And so this morning, we have the privilege to, to have the, the, the chaplain in our midst. And of course, the chaplain, as you know, is some religious person. Mm. He should be. <laughs> mm. And while we were there, he started to ask us individually how we felt about his passing and all of that. And as he reached to me, I said, yes, I've known him for a long time. And he was a good person to work with, all of that. But the thing that I'm saddened about is that he did not repent and give his life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So everybody's saying, rest in peace. There is no rest for him. Because when he was here, I, I have the opportunity to ask him to make it right with the Lord. But he would not accept it. Did you know what the, the, the chaplain said? He said, those things, there are certain things you don't have any control about. So then I get it that I, was, I, I wanted to ask him, which fate of you are you? Because, I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect that response from you. And oftentimes, persons came to me with problems. And so I would never refer them to the chaplain. I would never refer them to the council at the family court. I said, I have an apostle. I said, I can give you his number. I said, you need to know more about Jesus Christ. You need somebody who can listen and really give you the word. Mm -hmm. Because those people, they are in the flesh. And they're just going to tell you something, what you want to hear, or lead you in another path. Yeah, and, yeah. And, I, I, after, and I was not the only one there. But I, I, I felt that, I mean, what I was saying was gib gibberish. Because <laughs> the way they acted, everyone just, oh... And we, we missed him and whatever and whatever. And I said, my God, maybe I'm not human. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, uh, Pastor, not I am. Not only I am, human. I, <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly I, citizenship. <laughs> I, I am grateful. And, you know, Hallelujah. even sometimes the taxi men. And so I told them that as a child of God, you have the power. God has given you the privilege to minister the word to anybody yeah, who yeah. comes, whether they want it. It's not that everybody's going to accept it. Mm, but yeah. as long as you do your path. Yes. And you know, th this evening I was coming and I, Alex was at home and I said, Alex, I'm inviting you to Bible study. He said, Mommy, go and bring back. I said, no, you need to come because you need to hear for yourself. Mm. But Apostle, I am praying for him because oftentimes I'm coming to church I feel it in my spirit, and I feel guilty to know that I am coming and he's not coming. But I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, put it in my spirit. What the word to speak into him, that something will draw him to you mm. before it's too late. Because yes. it, no, I cannot be ministering to others and not ministering to him. But I tried and I know I have faith in God that mm. someday the Lord will draw him. Yes. Help me to draw him to mm. him hallelujah and that he will mm. repent and give his life to the lord yes. hallelujah come on give god a praise hallelujah. yes man we we are here to be a light and light reveals he says what manifests is light you don't show up cover up and conceal people in wrong or make persons who are wrong feel right or make those who are right feel wrong or make those who are not instead with the Lord sound like everything is good with the Lord. No, we need to let them know the truth. And many in the world are not prepared to accept the truth. They would say, no man, we don't know. Maybe still. Because they just hope that. And we tell you, say, true faith is not wishful thinking. It's based upon what the word of God says. Hallelujah. It wasn't wishful thinking that Abraham um, had that son and that he offered that son on the altar. I'm sure he didn't wish for that. <laughs> Praise God. But God gave him a word and it says, by faith, Abraham. You see, everything that was going to say, by faith. And when Noah built the ark, he said, by faith, Noah built an ark. Come on now. So it was now I just feel like Bill one big ark up on dry land. Uh -uh, he had a word on it. And that's what faith is based on the word of God. 
Come on now. Hallelujah. So keep declaring the word, my sister. And I know more will hear and the seed is being sown. So it's up to them to either allow the seed to be watered and spring forth or they allow other things to creep in and choke it. But we know that we are here sowing. As the Lord said, everywhere went, it was sowing. Some on the wayside, some among rocks, some among stones, but some fell on good ground. And it's reap 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. Come on. So keep sowing and declaring the word and living the word before them that they can see and know here is the way. Walk in it. Hallelujah. And more people need to know that. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, good night, Apostle. Yes, good night, sir, everyone. Coming. I'll just start by saying this. Um, faith is a lovely thing. Yes, sir. Um, coming here tonight was almost made impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the one thing is that um, I noticed while in traffic, we saw countless people turning back. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I looked over to Kadian and said, if... If I say apostle turn back, I <laughs> go turn back. So we kept going. So I reached. So I want to thank you for the word as usual. Every time yes, I sir. come into the house, I learn something. Mm -hmm. What I learned tonight was the true meaning of fasting. Mm -hmm. Because my word with fasting was that if I were to stop eating, the wind would have probably taken me up and blown me away. You know, I'm already <laughs> slim, but. True fasting is, it is indeed starving the flesh, yes. but not in terms of food. Mm -hmm. It is feeding the spirit, yes. doing the works of God, yeah. and not the work of ourselves. And also the teachings you give us on what the Sabbath is. There is no such thing as breaking the Sabbath. <laughs> the Sabbath is a lifestyle. So once we are doing what God commands and having faith, we are fasting. Yes, and you are in the Sabbath. <laughs> and always in the Sabbath. So. Because which parent wants their children to do without food to give them what they want? Exactly. Ask any parent, even those who are wicked. <laughs> we'll tell you uh -uh, that I don't want my children starving themselves to get favor from me. So why would anyone think that is what God wants? You see, when God commanded about them doing without food, it was to starve the flesh in terms of them recognizing that their sinful ways was being promoted by those evil desires within their flesh. So by taking the attention away from what the flesh wants, to think and center their mind on what God wants, it would lead them into a different mode of action. And behavior before God to see God's face and to hear God's heart and know what He wants for them. So, even when they talk about we going on Daniel fast 21 days, why did Daniel fast? Daniel didn't fast to, to get Osa, Kara, Lana, Ajab. Daniel fast because he read something in the, amongst the prophets and said he wanted to know why his nation, the people of God, was in such a state and what God going to do for you, turn it around for them. And God started to reveal the thing to Daniel. Huh? You see what I'm saying? So we must understand it. It must be for spiritual reasons. About getting closer to the Lord rather than just uh, now they're using fasting even for diet. It helps to make you lose some weight and you have better health. Eh? Really? So, so you see, it must come to a place that you realize that the fast that God really desires is that you continue to pursue Him, to know His heart and to do His will according to what He requires of you. And you are willing to do that no matter what kind of discomfort you go through to do it. Because you really want to please him above all else. Above the flesh, above yourself, above others. It's all about him. And that's why I said if you delight yourself in the Lord. 
He will give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord wants. The, 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 the only point we break that fast or break that communion or break that fellowship is when we yield to, the, to live according to the flesh. And he said, if we live according to the flesh, we will die. But if we live or walk according to the spirit, we will have life and peace. Hallelujah. And that is good. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Night, Apostle. Good night, everyone. Yes, good night. Um, so my takeaway from the word tonight. Yes, sir. Living and walking in the spirit as saints, mm. there is a magnitude of the power of God mm -hmm. that we are even yet to understand. There mm -hmm. is far above what we can even ask or imagine of what God can do in right. and for us. Um, and as you mentioned that God is faithful to his promises, I can attest to that, yes. I know that God made me a promise a few years back that he would take care of me. Even though I couldn't see um, the future, I didn't know what exactly he was referring to. But he said he would take care of me. And Apostle, during COVID, when you know that you know, a lot of jobs are being um, taken away from persons, persons... Mm going crazy, all sorts of stuff. I just yeah. came to Montego Bay from Mandeville, right? Oh I, ha I have no family down here. And the place that I was at, I believe God placed me there because this was a stranger I, I was living amongst and he allowed that woman to take care of me throughout months until I got a job. Praise I don't God. know her. Uh -huh. She's my landlady. She yes. feed me every day to mm. look out for me come at my door knock give me stuff go to the supermarket buy food carry grocery come give me and i don't know her mm -hmm. so i know that god is faithful and it's not just in the physical stuff mm -hmm. but during that time god fed my spirit yes. because i was home and i didn't want to go to any and any church because as i told you this mm -hmm. is the first church i'm coming to since i come to montego bay because mm -hmm. i was trying to um, keep my spirit uh, free from you know the mix up mix up I didn't mm -hmm. want that for me I want Amen. what is true and mm -hmm. what God has for me um, just to share something with you yesterday one of my co-workers she was talking to me about some issues that she's having in her life right mm -hmm. and I always say to God God I don't know the reason why you place me at this place that I'm working mm -hmm. but I know it's for a reason yes. and please help me to fulfill your purpose mm -hmm. your will and she was explaining something to me yesterday and it hit me I felt it because I went through similar right she is searching apostle when I tell her that she is searching she is searching for peace in her soul I could hear it in her voice she even tell me that she's searching on her phone for churches to attend in Montego Bay and God put me there at that time it was my break you know mm -hmm. and I sat at my seat to listen to her <laughs> and she said to me Kadian I need to hear the word I need something in my soul and I said to her you say you're searching for church you find any you want to go somewhere in your community she said it don't really matter it's good that I was listening mm. carefully I said to her I am going to invite you to my church come and hear the word mm. if when you come and hear the word and you decide it is for you pray about it let God put the put put his spirit in you right mm. if you want to continue coming here come if you decide that it is not for you oh well mm -hmm. but at least you can't say I did not invite you to hear the word right yeah, because yeah. I don't I am not um, mature enough to tell her everything but once she come and God feed her because anybody comes here always get a word once you come yeah, with the yes. expectation mm -hmm. right so apostle I am really grateful for Hallelujah. everything that you're teaching us I can say each Wednesday I come here I feed 
right? Mm -hmm. And it keeps me and it keeps building my spirit. Yes. And I am so thankful that uh, God has placed you in our lives. And I'm thankful for the day that I come here. Praise Thank you God. very much, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Yes, man. Because uh, we are praying for God to lead people here. That he would handpick those who wants to be here. We don't want to go to and grab any anybody coming and you know, yeah, you have to be careful who you're grabbing and come, you know. But like uh, as Sister Kunnamu says, she prayed about why she's there and God is answering to show her this is why a place to hear is not just a means of gaining some provision and finance. You know, people who have the kingdom have to think more than just provision and finance and think kingdom. What God, how can God be glorified in this by me being here? And you must listen to the Lord to get that opportunity and use it for his glory. Huh? So whether she come or not, you know, God allowed you to be there just in time to hear her and for her to hear you. And to put the two together to anchor that in her spirit. That if she didn't come, then God will bring her up to her remembrance that I made a way for you. Yes, man. So that's all we are here you know, to provide that option for people. Because if we were not here, then there wouldn't be anywhere here for anybody to come to get this kind of ministry. So us being here make this available for somebody. Not everyone will come, but there are those who need to come. Hallelujah. And there are those who have come already that need to come some more. <laughs> but I know that that still be their decision. We cannot force them to do so. But we know that when they do so, there's always a ripple effect of what happened in their life. Also impact the lives of those around them. Even those who weren't even mindful of what they were doing. Start to gain the benefits. Huh? Yeah, man, that's what I read in the word. The word of God says that when one lights a lamp, is not the lamp is not lit just for the lamp, but to give light to everyone in the house. Think about that. To give light to everyone. It means that not everyone in the house will be light, but you as that light in the house will give light to everyone. Come on. So that the same thing at the workplace, same thing in your community, same thing in your family. You must be that light. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Good night, Apostle. Good night, saints. Good night, sis. Um, Apostle, I must give you thanks for the word. Yes, ma'am. Um, most times when I come to Bible study, I got a word. I want to say something, but I don't know why I don't want to come. But tonight, the, the topic is living and walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yes, and, you know, without the word of God, you cannot walk in the spirit. That's you right. have to have the word in order to walk. And, you know... The scripture about Abraham, in spite of everything, Abraham, Abraham didn't look at how whole he was. Mm -hmm. he, as you said, he held on to his faith and know that the word is there mm -hmm. to keep him. And uh, for me, I just want to be like Abraham because some, some of the time, for me, my faith wavers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wavers when, when situations arise. My faith wavers, but then I can hear your voice, you know, speaking, and, and I get back in track. That is the reason why I always like to talk to you, talk mm. to Pastor Severson, mm. somebody who is more stronger than me in the spiritual walk, you yeah. know, because they cannot find any and anybody to be your mentor. Yeah. You have That's to have true. godly mentor to really lead you in the direction that God wants you to go. Amen. Because, you know, you, you, you cannot be wayward. Mm -hmm. If you're serving God, you cannot be wayward. Mm -hmm. You have to walk in the spirit. And I thank you for the word tonight, Apostle. You know, as I spoke to you, I went up um, for some days. And 
I, I called my niece and she said she was on fasting. And then I called my sister and said, what is she fasting about? And she was like, I don't know, you know, because she always said she depends on fasting and she go back to the same old thing. And I said, look at it. I come to Bible study tonight and I heard it, you know, so I am happy for the word, know how to really fast, you know, the, 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 the step. In, in true fasting, mm. you know, and I, I don't think persons should fast, as, as the scripture said, and go down in sackcloth and ashes and, and for your skin to itch. And at the same time, they come out the same way they, they mm. go and fast. You have to be different. Serving God, knowing the word of God, you have to be different. You cannot yes. come in contact with God and still be the same. Mm -hmm. Every day is a process and every day you need to go higher and higher in God. So I'm just asking you all just to pray for me because my intention, my aim, my desire is to you know, go higher and higher in God, study the word of God more so I can walk in the spirit. Amen. Keep focus on the word because it's the word that brings that life and you have to think of the word as more than letters and consonants that form words. But think of Christ as the word and think of his life in you as the spirit and embrace that hallelujah don't let that miss you practice the presence of god practice the what yes what does that mean it means you always must be mindful of the presence of god in you and within you don't do anything to violate compromise or defile that come on and then you're gonna go from strength to strength and from glory to glory amen and it's nice to be in the lord hallelujah praise god i'm telling you, it's awesome and god is giving us great understanding in that and you want more persons to understand it's a reality. It's not wishful thinking. You don't have to wish to experience the Lord. You can truly experience him. Hallelujah. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second of the day. Come on. And that is something that's, I mean, when you enjoy that presence for just a day, my God, you're going to want more than one day. Hallelujah. That's what I'm telling you. And that's what we want persons to be propelled into a deeper fellowship and experience of God's presence and power in their lives like never before. Amen. And they must keep on increasing. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right, any comments online? Any? Okay, everybody's quiet there. Praise God. Well, come on, bow your heads with me. Praise God, Father. We thank you for your word. We know your word, it brings spirit and life. You're pouring up yourself into us through your word and your spirit. The spirit bears witness with our spirit to the work that you are doing in conforming us to the image of Christ and bringing us in the fullness as true sons and daughters of the Most High God, ex expressing, experiencing, and embodying your presence and anointing in the earth. And so we yield ourselves to you, Father. We pray that every issue, everything the enemy has sent against us or in every way, O oh God, to interfere or to block or to corrupt the process of what you're doing within us, will be ejected, evicted, will come under pressure from your kingdom now, be quick come as dust beneath our feet. In the name of Jesus, let your angelic host be released now with flaming sword to buffet and to smite, torment and afflict the enemy. Drive them into outer darkness. Drive them out of our presence. Drive them out of our spear. Let grace and favor surround us like a shield, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let your anointing reign. Rush upon our innermost being now revive and refresh heal and deliver 
from everything the enemy has sown and planted against our health, our wealth, our development, our strength, our peace in you. In the name of Jesus, raise up the standard now, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit be magnified in our midst. Cut and clear the way. Disappoint the enemy's plans. Compromise everything he has set into place. Let it backfire, misfire, derail, and self destruct. In the name of Jesus, overthrow everything he has sown and, and set up against us. And let your angelic coast be like a wall of fire around us now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for grace, hallelujah, and great favor over your people right now as you elevate and lift us to new levels of faith and understanding in your word. We praise you as we claim the victory. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Roshabasa. He deserves the praise and the glory. Every time. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We adore you. We magnify you. Set the pace so what you want to do, Lord. And open the floodgates of heaven. And let it rain upon your people. Mighty deliverance. Mighty breakthrough. Mighty relief and release over your people. In the name of Jesus, we declare your praises. Yes, Lord, your kingdom come. And your will be done. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Time to release you. We reach to the point now we are to let you out of this place. Hallelujah. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart while I give the final word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online are watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. He wanted to know the word of the kingdom. Jesus said when one hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the enemy, the devil comes and robs that word from his heart. Hallelujah. And he becomes void and null. He becomes an open prey to the enemy. But God is calling us to hear the word and to understand it because he said those who hear and understand, hallelujah, even more will be given to them and they will have an abundance. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Lord wants you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. As children of God, you are ears of God and join ears with Christ. And the Father said, it's his good pleasure to give to you the kingdom of God. So I want you to know more about it. We release a book on Amazon.com. It's called the Gospel of the Kingdom. You can go on Amazon.com and type in the search box, Richard Fagan, and the book will come up. Hallelujah. And of course, you will see, hallelujah, the subtitle is the gospel that Jesus preached. There's a lot of things they preach out there that they have added their version and thoughts and opinions and culture in it. But the Lord wants us to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about the kingdom of God and how it operates. Because as joint ears, we need to know as ears how the kingdom the principles by which the kingdom is governed through the word and his Holy Spirit and operate of such as those who will be appointed as ears with him in the kingdom. Amen. 
Praise God. So you can read about it more in the book. You can order it online to Amazon.com. If you're in our vicinity, you can order the hard cover copies from us here in Montego Bay. Praise God. If not, you can order it online or download it to Kindle to get it on your device. And believe me, it will be a great addition to your library and build a most holy faith in the Lord. And so we encourage you to get your copy and move on with the Lord and encourage others to do the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you want to get more of the teaching, just send a friend's request to Richard V. Fagan on Facebook. It'll be plugged into our five live stream teachings each week on Facebook that is streamed. And I believe that it will be a great booster to your faith. And also we edited it and put it on our YouTube channel. Look for Apostle Richard Fagan and subscribe and you'll realize of course we added more scripture to the youtube version and it'll be of great blessing to you to know the word can more confidently defend your faith and declare what the lord said rather than what men think or want to say because we are appointed to declare his word and to stand upon his word and he said those who keep these saints he will lighten them to one who build their house upon the rock a wise man Bill is host on the rock, and when the winds and waves and beat upon that house, that house stood firm. But those who did not keep it, he said, everything was lost. Great was the ruin, though they faced the same circumstance because their house was built upon the sand. It was not stable. It was, it was of course, not able to bear up what they had built on it, and they lost everything. God wants more for you. So get into the word and hear what the Lord is saying to you. And move on in faith, in committing your life to Christ and allowing him to shape and form your life into one. As one is true, born of God, filled with his spirit and walking, hallelujah, in obedience to his word. Amen. Praise God. So if you want to check out our website, check it out. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl. Dot org. Those who have been blessed by the ministry want to sow can so to the website. The options are there. You can check out our long term and short term visionary goals. And if anything connects with your spirit, you want to connect with us to get it done. We believe together we can do more than we can apart. So by faith, move on and connect with us. Don't allow others to, to talk to you out of what God has spoken you in the spirit to do. Praise God and allow the Lord to lead you into that phase of overflow through obedience and hearkening to his voice. I believe you will see that and much more to come. Praise God. Also, we have our own gift package for you. It's called our daily devotional. It's still the gospel of the kingdom being taught in nugget form, in short term uh, devotional segments uh, for every day of the month from January this year, 2023 to this month, October is already out and ready. So you can get day-to-day -day teachings in it that will help you and your family to be daily abreast with the word and build your most holy faith in the Lord. See the presence and power of God manifest in your life like never before. So come on, get on board and see what God wants to do in you. It will surprise you if you do. And I'm telling you, you will never want to go back to the life you were living before if you have a real taste and experience of the life and power of God through his word and his Holy Spirit. And there's so much more he has in store for you. Come on. So any further question you have, you can call me, Richard Fagan at 876-839-9390-876-557-2427. And we send that love gift to you of our daily devotional. It will impact greatly in your life. And also any other question, you can just contact me. We'll see how much we can help you. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. As you move forward in faith, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. You're blessed tonight. Praise God as a blessing, share the word with you and for your being here and for those who have joined us online, taking the time to do so. We appreciate you doing so and we pray that you've really hearkened to the word, not just to be a hearer of a word, but a doer of the word that will see greater manifestation of God's presence and power in your life. Praise God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. God love you all. In Jesus' name, amen.